Now, if you're looking for bigger fish, the big fatties, okay, you guys know who you are. If you're looking for the fatties, you want an opportunity at a 10 pounder, my suggestion to you is to fish. Hey, you guys, welcome to the channel. It is almost that time of year again. That's right, April in the D, and we are all here for one thing, and that is Detroit River walleye fishing. Don't get me wrong, I am a huge Detroit Tigers fan, Detroit Lions fan, a tortured fan for decades and decades, I'm sure like a lot of you guys are, but we're not here to talk about professional sports, we're here to talk about Detroit River walleye jigging. That's right, the spring run is almost here, April's right around the corner, guys are already catching fish, so we're gonna talk about the Detroit River, we're gonna talk about where to find them, how to find them, what to use to catch them, where to catch them, when to catch them. I'm gonna break it all down for you as far as setup, uh, how to set your boat up, how to properly use your trolling motor to stay vertical. Um, we're, we're gonna break it all down for you guys in one video. So pay attention and let's dive right into it. Now I actually have two favorite style jig heads. Uh, I specifically use one ounce jig heads. Now you can use, you can use whatever size you want, but for a beginner learning how to fish the Detroit River, if it's your first time, I found my best luck with the one ounce jig head. Um, that one has, has a little different shape to it, as you can see. And then I also really like the gumball style. Try to focus it here. This is just a gumball jig head. I get these from Will D. Jigs every year at the Ultimate Fishing Show. He's got a booth. He'll set you right up. You buy them by the ounce. That's how he sells them. Um, one ounce jig heads, always. Now here's another setup, a full setup, that I like to use. That is the Finesse Minnow, and we're gonna dive into the plastics and stuff like that. But you can use, I've even heard of guys using uh, one and a half ounce jigs just to feel bottom and that's the idea behind the whole process is maintaining contact with the bottom of the river that's where the walleye are at that's where they're feeding that's where they're spawning that's where they're doing all their all their business is down there so you want to maintain contact with the bottom of the river um, now let's dive into the plastics quick and then I'll get into how I set everything up but your most popular uh, soft plastic is going to be the split tail minnow uh, these are made by Lunker City. There's dozens, you guys, there's dozens of brands out there that you can buy. Um, I know Lure Lipstick is becoming another popular one. I've always rolled with Lunker City if I'm going with the split tail minnow. They're easy to find pretty much anywhere. Uh, another option that I really like is the Bondi Worm. Super durable plastic. You can, you can fish this thing for the entire season and you're going to have success and you're not going to go, you, you know, one bag of each color that you like and uh, you'll be good to go. Another good one is the Wyandotte Worm. Another great option. Um, really my go-to is the Worm style. The Worm style is my go-to for walleye fishing, whether it's St. Clair River, Detroit River, whether it's the Saginaw River, I've had my personal best success on using a worm style plastic. That's me, everybody may be different. Some of my favorite colors of the soft plastics. Number one, if I'm using a split tail minnow, I'm probably gonna start with something like this. Blue and silver with a chartreuse tip on the tail, it just gives them fish a target. I don't necessarily, I mean, color does matter, but I like chartreuse to give the fish a target to strike. Another good one, black ice. Another solid option. And uh, this is the Motor City Madness by Lunker City. As you can see, it's kind of got a little purple hue to it. I don't know, I just thought it was cool looking, but it has become one of my favorites. Now, when it gets to the worm style, I specifically have two colors I use. Bondi worm, chartreuse, and you can get Bondi worms in this color as well. I just picked up the Wyandotte worm, but a dark color. Again, that's like black, but again, notice the chartreuse tip on the tail. Gives the fish a target. So those are the plastics I like to use, guys. Now, again, um, 
you, you could go down a deep wormhole with all this type of stuff. Um, but that's what I use, that's what I know works. And uh, we're gonna get into the setup now. So I like to use a 6668 uh, fishing rod, medium action. That's gonna be your go-to. You're gonna want a medium action. That's what I've found uh, from my experience to be one of the better uh, actions for walleye fishing, medium fast. You want that little bit of flex in the tip to maintain the feel of the bottom when you're jigging. So medium fast, medium moderate would even work, um, but keep it under seven foot. Six, 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 eight is perfect because when you're jigging off the side of the boat, it, it keeps it closer to the bow of your boat, especially if you're the guy running the motor, um, which we're gonna get into how to maintain a vertical presence with the trolling motor in a second. But in order to keep that close to the boat, you're gonna want a, a little bit shorter of a rod, but something with some flex, but also backbone to set the hook and bring them walleye up from the depths. As you can see here, this is my setup. Now we were just talking about uh, favorite setups. As you can see, this is what I have tied on right now. That is a one ounce jig head with a uh, black and chartreuse bonding worm, as well as a stinger hook. Now stinger hooks are a must. Stinger hooks are a must. A lot of fish I catch come directly on this stinger hook. Um, a lot of times those fish, what they do, you will get them where they're aggressively striking and you're gonna get them on the main hook. But that stinger hook, a lot of times walleye just come up from under it and they inhale a bunch of water, but they don't necessarily get far enough to get the main hook. What you want to do is have that stinger the length of the bottom of your plastic at a minimum. You don't want to go too crazy long because then you're going to end up snagging bottom with it and stuff like that. So you're going to want to stay away from too crazy long of stingers, but also too short isn't going to do you any justice. It's just extra hooks there that are going to get tangled up with weeds and grass on the bottom, stuff like that. I also, you see that little piece of plastic right there, I also use that to pin my stinger hook down. I don't tie my own stingers. You can tie your own stingers if you choose to where they cinch down. I find it simple enough just to sacrifice one piece of bondy worm and uh, go ahead and attach it to the hook like that. And that's how the setup should look in its entirety right there. So that's what I use um, all the time. Detroit River and St. Clair River. I'm strictly one ounce. Uh, that just works best for me, guys. I can really maintain the bottom, and if I have other people fishing with me, stuff like that, or I'm on somebody else's boat, it allows me to maintain contact with the bottom all the time. 2000 size reel or 200 series reel, I use the, this is the Daiwa Legalis. The Daiwa Legalis, this is the 2000 series. Um, really, you don't need anything, you don't need anything huge. Like you get into the 3,000 and 4,000, stuff like that, it gets to be a bit much. You want something light because you're gonna be jigging and it's, it's gonna create a little fatigue in your wrist, right? So you wanna keep the setup as light as possible, but at the same time, you wanna have the strength and the power. I recommend the Daiwa Legalis. A lot of these things I'm mentioning, you can find in the stores, but I'm also going to I'll leave some links in the description of the video for you guys. If you just want to click and order it online, you'll have the ability to do so. Um, let's get into line. As you can see, I use a high-vis braid. High-vis braid is key to staying vertical um, on the Detroit River. It's a fast-flowing river, and the idea behind the high-vis braid is that you can physically see where your line's at. Your line is going to be 99% of the time your rod's in the hand, the line is going to be taut. Whether you're pulling it up or setting it down on the bottom, your line is going to be taut. You want to be able to see that so you can maintain, um, you know, somewhat perfect of a vertical setup when you're jigging. 100% perfect is never going to happen unless you're a professional and even them guys, you're, you're constantly kind of chasing your line around. So I like using a high-vis braid. The fish don't see it. I'm not worried about fish seeing it. I'm worried about me seeing the line. And I tie, so that's a 15 pound braid. That's uh, Power Pro, actually I got it right here. I like Power Pro braid. That's what I use right there. And that's the high vis yellow, as you guys can see it there. Um, that's what I like, that's what I prefer. That's what I use on all my setups, bass fishing, walleye fishing. 
I used a bright yellow Power Pro braid. That's the number one braid that I have found over the years of fishing that does not fade in color. When fishing line, braided line turns white because it fades, I'm, I lose my sense of where it's at, right? I can't see white that well, especially in low light conditions on braided line that's that thin. But when you color it and it maintains its color, that's what I'm looking for. That's what you're gonna get out of Power Pro. Now, I always tie a leader, as you can see right here, a floral carbon leader. Now, as far as leader length, um, I'm gonna suggest to you, I'm gonna suggest at least the length of your rod. Okay, so why is that? I go longer, but at least the length of your rod, and that's important to have the leader. Why? Because it's not about the fish seeing it. I've caught walleye on straight braid, okay? It's not about the fish being able to see the line, it's about being able to break off your line when you snag, because when you fish the Detroit River, you're gonna snag bottom. There's no way around it, you're gonna snag bottom. So what you're gonna wanna do is have a leader tied up, I specifically use the Alberto knot. The Alberto knot is a fantastic, quick, easy to tie braid to leader knot. If you guys are interested in learning how to tie the Alberto knot, I'll also leave that video in the description of this video. That way you guys can learn how to tie it. If you don't know how to tie it already, you can tie it in a matter of seconds once you do it a couple times. But that's what I use. Um, and as far as tying to the jig head, I tie directly too. Um, I tie directly to the jig head. I don't use a swivel. I don't use nothing like that. Tie directly to the jig head. And you can use you know, whatever knot you choose. A lot of people like the uh, loop knot. I like to tie directly to the jig. I have better feel that way. The jig doesn't swivel on me. And I use a 10, anywhere from eight to 12 pound leader will work depending on your preference. But I use a 10 pound leader. Um, when I'm fishing the river with the 15 pound braid and that 10 pound leader, when I hang up on the bottom and I can't free it, a few tugs and that baby busts free. Um, that's what you wanna do. You don't wanna be leaving a bunch of line if you hang up. You don't wanna be cutting your braid. I've been there, done that. And uh, I made the mistake of doing that. So always tie a leader to your braid and do at least, call it six to eight foot, maybe even 10 foot. That way, if it does break off right at the jig head, it leaves you some leeway um, some leader length there to uh, go ahead and retie rather than retying the leader you're retying the jig head So before we go any further guys if you're new here and you haven't yet I want to take the opportunity to offer you to subscribe to my youtube channel It is free to subscribe to my channel. It costs you nothing All it does is shows your support to my channel to youtube that you like my content as well as Every time I upload a new video, you're gonna get a notification sent to your phone directly the second it uploads. And um, I do a lot of things outdoors, guys. I'm an angler, uh, muskie, walleye, bass. Um, I do a lot of outdoor activities such as hunting. I travel the US and go, uh, I've been on multiple elk hunts. I hunt whitetail, things like that. So if you guys are into that kind of thing, consider subscribing. Again, it's 100% free no cost to you. Okay, so now let's talk about where you, sh where you should fish to locate these fish, depending on time of day and water temperature. Um, when it comes to water temperature, the Detroit River fires off on all cylinders once you get right in that 40 degree range just above. Now, if you're fishing low light conditions, first thing in the morning, after sunset, you're gonna wanna hug closer to the shoreline, get maybe, 40 to 75 yards off the sea walls where you're doing your drift. Um, as the sun rises or you get towards midday, all those fish like to do is, okay, imagine here's the river channel. All those fish do is just make their way into a little deeper water. While I cannot stand sunlight, it's like as if their eyeballs are burning out. They do not like bright light at all. So they will move deeper as the day goes on, but they like to spawn. They like to do the things they wanna do in the shallows. So what that means for you is you need to find yourself in them lower light conditions, utilizing your side scan, making a pass, and trying to find these fish, and then dial it in. If you don't have side scan, you don't need it. If you just have regular sonar, put on your down imaging so you can see if there's structure, see if you notice any fish on there, see if you notice bait fish, anything. 
You're also going to be able to tell where guys are fishing based off where the boats are. But I've found great success getting on one side or other of the pack. You may get in line with them, but get on one side or the other because those fish aren't being bothered right there. And you'd be surprised uh, how those walleye get bothered with the boat traffic right above their head all morning, all evening, all afternoon. So another thing to consider is if you don't want to get in the mix of guys, I've had some of my best trips on the Detroit River, you guys, moving ahead of the pack or going below them. You're going to notice where guys are doing their drift and then they pull up, hit the middle of the channel, come back around and do another drift. It may pay off for you guys to just nudge ahead of them a few hundred yards and start your drift sooner than where they are. And you may never even end up in the mess of boats. You may just hammer them right out away from the pack. So it's something else to consider as well. Um, minnows, as far as live bait, if you're fishing anything under 40 degrees surface temp, Live bait is gonna increase your success. Now, if you're gonna rig live bait, all you're gonna do is take this exact same setup, like I got here, pop this guy off here, you're gonna thread your minnow on, and then put this bad boy right on there. And that plastic will not only help hold the minnow, helps keep your stinger hook and all that type of stuff tied down. And again, guys, don't tie your stinger hook down to the plastic. Keep that stinger hook free floating. That's the idea behind it. And it allows for when them walleye come up to take some water um, to swipe at your plastic, it's gonna allow that to get them first. And I mean, it's already got me, so you can imagine what it's gonna do to walleye's face when he decides to uh, attack it. So location, again, a little shallower first thing in the morning. Don't be afraid to move out deeper as the day goes on. The fish are still there. Sometimes they shut off. A lot of times they'll still bite. You just gotta get back on top of them. Uh, live bait, again, if the water surface temp is below 40 degrees, you're gonna find better success with live bait. But once you get above that 40 degree mark, you can forget the minnows, leave them at home. Don't even go to the bait shop for them. I know a lot of guys like to still buy them. You don't need them. You don't necessarily need them. If you want to increase your odds of potentially catching, Minnows help, but you do not need them to catch them once the water temps hit 40 and above. Straight plastic, you should knock them dead. So now let's talk about why Detroit River is such a fantastic walleye fishery. And that has to do with, it is a river system located in between Lake Erie and Lake St. Clair. And you have walleye coming from both directions. So what does that mean? That means that the, that river system is going to be loaded in the springtime with walleye. Um, now, if you're looking for bigger fish, the big fatties, okay, you guys know who you are. If you're looking for the fatties, you want an opportunity at a 10 pounder, my suggestion to you is to fish the southern end of the river towards Lake Erie, maybe that Trenton Channel area. Fish through there because your bigger fish are gonna come from Lake Erie. You'll still get big fish mid river or even up further, but your odds are better of getting bigger fish further south. That's, that's from my experience. If anybody has any other experience with that, feel free to leave a comment in the comment section. If you're strictly a numbers guy, anywhere's, anywhere in the river is gonna do you well. But from the Ambassador Bridge north up to Lake St. Clair, phenomenal spots to fish all the way through there. We talked about the spots to fish already. So <clears throat> find yourself anywhere in there and you're gonna have success. Now, let's get into the fishing license. If you're a Canadian angler, you're going to want to buy a Michigan fishing license. There's times where the Canadian side will produce better than the American, and there's times where the American side will produce better than the Canadian side, and vice versa. For you Michigan anglers or anybody in the U.S. coming to Detroit to walleye fish, be sure to go online. It's super simple uh, to go ahead and order yourself a Canadian fishing license. I buy the yearly every year because I do find myself going over to Canada more times than not in the St. Clair River, the Detroit River, even Lake St. Clair, Muskie and smallmouth fishing, you guys, you want that Canadian license, especially if you're a Michigan resident. You don't wanna have to buy the one day multiple times. If you have the extra money, buy the one year, get the three year sport card. I think that's the minimum that you can get on that and uh, take care of that. That way you're 100% legal out on the water and you're not limited to just one side of the river or the other. All right, you guys, so we're gonna talk about one of the most important aspects of vertical jigging the river and that is what it's called is vertical jigging. Now I had a lot of questions in my last video about specifically 
um, how to stay vertical or how to use your trolling motor, like what's the concept behind it, right? I'm actually gonna use this smaller rod. If you believe it or not, I've still got ice fishing gear out. Um, but the idea behind vertical jigging is just that, and it is to stay vertical. Um, you want to stay as vertical as you possibly can, and in order to achieve that, an over-the-bow trolling motor is going to be your best friend. I've done it using the big motor, you guys. It works, but it's, it's a pain in the butt. It's 100% it's a pain in the butt you want to make sure you got that over the bow trolling motor. You don't need the best out on the market. You need something that's powerful enough for your boat and you want to ask your boat dealer about that depending on the size of boat you got. You know, you may need a 24 volt, you may need a 36 volt over the bow trolling motor. Um, I always got away with a 24 volt. Currently I'm using a 12 volt and it does just fine for me, especially in the kayak. Um, so what we're going to do is talk about how to stay vertical. So the whole idea behind it, and I'm gonna to try to simplify it, is follow your line. So what you do is you come up into the current, right? You wanna face into the current. Now, if you're, a, if you're an experienced angler, I know there's guys that, dependent on the wind, you know, they put the wind to their back. They don't always face into the current. If you wanna make life easy on yourself, face your boat into the current. Put the, bow of your, the nose of your boat, the bow of your boat right into the current. And what's gonna happen is that current is going to move your boat, right? But your jig head, okay, your jig head will be moving at a different speed. Your boat more than likely will be moving faster than your jig head as you're slowly working at the bottom. So what you're gonna do, and I prefer the foot pedal, right? A lot of guys use the key fob, the remote fob. I prefer the foot pedal. And what you're gonna do is follow your line. So let it down, hit bottom, and what's initially gonna happen is your line is gonna to wanna to get away from you, right? So you wanna pull your boat up and try to keep your line straight up and down. You don't want it getting away from you like this or even off to the side of the boat. I haven't found any success in setting the trolling motor at a specific speed. Once you dial in that speed, you don't want to go too fast and you're overcompensating all the time and you don't wanna to be too slow on the speed to where you're constantly having to push the motor ahead, you know, bump the boat ahead. What you want to do is find that happy medium where you can just tap the motor, give it a little juice, and it, it pushes you up just a little bit, just enough to keep you vertical. Now that is going to come with time on the river. You're not going to perfect it your first time out there. You're not going to protect, perfect it in the first five trips out there. But now you will also run into your line coming off to the side of you. The current can do funny things. But my number one advice to you is, when you drop your line down, is to follow your line. If your line's going to the right a little bit, kick the trolling motor that way and stay right on top of it. If it comes back around to the left turn, and eventually you will dial it in to where you can almost keep it right where you want it off the front of the boat, right? Granted, again, the current does funny things, but the idea is to 100% just follow your line around to help you stay vertical. You're not gonna be out there doing 360s if you listen to what I'm telling you, and that is start with the bow of your boat in the current, nose into the current, no matter what way the wind direction is, the current flows one way, flows north to south, comes from Lake St. Clair, goes down to Lake Erie. So point your boat, the nose of your boat, right into the current, and then just dial in your speed. I've never found success by setting a speed and just running it and then trying to chase it around. That, that doesn't work for me. What I like to do is put it right at a happy medium and just tap that power and keep just tapping it to keep yourself vertical. And you don't want to be chasing your line all over the river because I've done that before and it's a pain in the butt. So just find yourself a happy medium and just focus on keeping that line as straight up and down as possible. So now we will get into jigging techniques. One thing about the Detroit River and vertical jigging walleye just in general one thing I have found over the years of doing it is that if you're on the boat with multiple people, there's always one guy that's catching them better than the rest. And 99% of the time, it has nothing to do with their jig head or their plastic. What it is, is the jigging cadence, right? So your cadence varies and you want to learn to be able to vary that cadence. You don't, I mean, there is times where you can just snap jig it and the fish are biting it. 
But you got to understand, you need to be willing to adapt to the situation, the, the conditions of the water, and to be able to catch these fish. There's times, you guys, where I let it hit bottom, and I just slow lift, hold it, and then slowly set it down. Slow lift, hold it, and slowly set it down. And there's also times where I just slow lift it and hold it for like a 10 count and then set it back down. There is times where that is what it takes to get these fish to bite. Now when they're super active and aggressive, sure, you can just constantly keep, you know, just tap and bottom, tap bottom, lift it up, tap bottom, lift it up. But be advised that that is not always the perfect cadence. And if you have multiple people on your boat and there's one dude catching them, or one side of the boat catching them. Just pay attention to how they're jigging. It's as simple as that. More than likely their cadence is different than what you're using and that's, that's what's working. Um, color, all that stuff does matter, but most importantly your jigging cadence is what's gonna get you the most bites. Don't be afraid to just feel like it's torture and just slowly lift and set it back down. And slowly lift and set it back down. It can be almost like torture, but there is times, more times than not, especially when the water's cold, that that is the presentation they want. That's what's gonna get you more fish in the boat. All right, guys, so I feel like I have covered a lot in this video. Um, we covered jig heads, we've covered plastics, we've covered stinger hooks, we've covered rod and reel, line, all that. Um, locations, what to use, water temp, I feel like I broke it down the best I can for you guys. I hope you have a successful trip out there this year. Leave me a comment. I appreciate the comments. I appreciate interacting with you guys in the comments. It means the world to me. And if you haven't yet and you're still here, consider subscribing to the channel. Again, it is 100% free for you guys. And uh, all it's gonna do is just send you a notification the second I upload another video onto the platform. Thanks a lot, you guys. Tight lines and we'll see you on the next one.